Act three. Act three. I'm sorry, I scared you. I'm sorry, I scared you with that. But then again, it's not that hard to scare me. Yeah. It, also, it does say Act three, like in all caps, and with an exclamation point right here. Act three. Welcome, yes. my friends, to Act three. The part of our extremely long podcast where we finally get around to actually talking about a movie on this and ostensibly and ostensibly movie themed podcast. Yes. And this week we are traveling to the land of the rising sun, Japan, or as it's or as it's called in Japan, here. <laughs> Or as it's called in Mexico, El Japan. El Japan. A, pl a place of traditional values and ancient temples and history and vending machines where you can buy a 10-year-old girl's pea-soaked underwear. Ah, Japan. Wouldn't it be Japan? Nope. Oh, yeah. Japan. Uh, Japan <laughs> is what it would be because the J is an H. Can I ask you a question? And then the H is silent, so so the Incredible Hulk is just Ulk. <laughs> Ulk los smashos. That sounds like something in the darkness was coming for you. Yeah, the Ulk. <laughs> be, be afraid of the Ulk, children. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's coming so for you. It's like monsters that Christians make up to scare kids into nice. movies. Also, is the piece of underwear thing real? Damn it, I forgot to I'm uh, assuming. The underwear yeah. is yeah. real. Yeah. What? What? Oh, oh my goodness. What's that? Okay. I don't need sour cream. Ah, Japan. <laughs> A place in the cutting edge of science and the creators of the absolute latest in technology and the creators of like 13 The Ring movies. Yes. They made a shit ton of those The Ring movies in Japan, like a ridiculous amount, like a Godzilla amount of The Ring movies. They made like, they made like, I believe, 12 The Ring movies in Japan. Really? That is way too many. Yeah, like a ridiculous amount of freaking The Ring movies, an insane amount. And then America uh, made rings and they stopped. Yeah. Ah, uh, Japan, a place whose history was forged by warriors, by shoguns, by strong, bold leaders of men, and by men dressed in rubber lizard suits pretending to destroy small models of Japanese cities. Yes. Ah, Japan. A nation that created a monster catching game for small children, which in America is played by 30 year old nerds. <laughs> ah, Japan. A place where something, 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 hello kitty, I'll write it eventually. Ah, Japan. <laughs> Japan is a bit of a weird place if you if you're not catching my drift. Okay, I'm using your shoes. And uh, a few things can call themselves weirder than this week's movie, the two thousand the two thousand and fifteen surreal Japanese horror film with finger quotes, known only as Tag. Tag. Uh huh. And I was talking to somebody about it, Emerald. I was talking to Emerald about this week's movie, and I was trying to figure out a way to explain it. And the way that I came up with is, like, this is how I see the film. Uh, Japan has decided to make a Japanese version of Alice in Wonderland. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I can see so that. It's gonna be an Alice. In, it's gonna be an Alice in Wonderland film, but it has to be Japan. So of course, schoolgirls in short skirts. Yes, gotta have that. Of course gratuitous violence can we have a few slow motion shootouts of course you can women in panties getting killed check hideous creatures a ridiculous amount of violence how much blood should we use well let's just get like three pools full yeah mm -hmm. and then we'll we'll see we'll see where we'll go from there leather outfits necks that break easily like crackers yes and and, and, uh, and 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 more upshot skirts than could possibly be conceived of. Yeah, ridiculous up skirt shots and a plot by Timothy Leary. Yes, Japan's Alice in Wonderland. I didn't. I did. I I really liked the movie until you got to the explanation. 
I, nah, I didn't mind that either, either, because this was just a goofy fucking yeah. ass movie. Yeah, it was just a goofy Japanese, bloody, and I, I I don't know why they have not been able to catch up to the United States in their blood technology. You know? Yeah. I mean, Japanese blood is like the fakest blood ever. Yeah. So, so let me explain how I found this film. I'm really uh, proud of this. So this is how I found this week's film. Um, I loved NBC's Community. Yes. In in my mind, Community was right is right up there with uh with other uh, NBC shows like. Um, 30 Rock and Parks and Rec and stuff like that. This is right up there with that. Yeah. I I, I absolutely am in love with this freaking with this freaking show. Uh, it's set in a community college. It's a group of uh, people in a study group for Spanish 101. It lasted six seasons. Did not get a movie as promised. After... <laughs> After, yes, that 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 toy is cute. After the show got canceled, the cast went their separate ways, and at first, it looked like Chang was going to be the most successful with his uh, TV show Doctor Ken, but then that got canceled. Uh, Br- Britta Perry is the female lead on Netflix's Love, and that's good for her. She's also doing a play on Broadway about the the uh, problems with uh, po- political super PACs and how it's uh, ruining the government. It, it, it's supposed to be some amazing play. I don't I don't know much about it. Uh, that's Britta Perry. Good for her. But probably the most successful right now is the nerdy, studious female uh annie edison aka allison brie she married dave franco Uh uh-huh and okay oh i'm following everybody the the more people i follow the more people are following me back and i thought that that was good i want to make it clear i'm not interrupting podcasts steve Stop the middle of the podcast and listen to my conversation and say something I, to I me. Stopped, I Are stopped the podcast in the middle of you guys talking really loudly because I heard something about me. I apologize. You don't have to unfollow me. Uh, uh, well, never mind. We'll talk about it. Ooh, and, you're in trouble. Right? Ooh. We'll talk about trouble. it later, honey. Yeah. Allison Brie married Dave Franco and she was the voice of Unikitty in the Lego uh, movie and now she is the star of Netflix's Glow which I swear I'll get around to watching yeah so good for her I love her I love Allison Brie I really need to watch I really need to watch Glow because apparently uh, the wrestling coordinator, the the person who was in charge of, like the wrestling choreographer was Chavo Guerrero Jr. Oh, okay. Chavo was the choreographer. He was technically uh, nominated for an Emmy. <laughs> okay. Because he was a cast member of GLOW, which was up for some big awards. Good for him. Uh, the creepy... The creepy undercover cop from Lucha Underground uh, is also it also apparently has a small part in Glow. So so good for I, I'm gonna watch it eventually. Um, but the star of Community, Jeff Winger, aka Joe McHale, yes. has also joined the world of Netflix. He was a young, sexy Chevy Chase in. The previous uh, podcast film, A Futile and Stupid Gesture, which I still really liked. Yes. I really liked that movie. And 
he parlayed that into his own Netflix show called The Joe McHale Show with Joe McHale. And I really like the show because the show isn't afraid to admit that it's just a clone of his previous show, The Soup. Yeah. Because it's literally just The Soup. But in modern day and, a, and, and on Netflix, and it's, it's really good. The funny thing about the show that I really like is that the show has access to the entire Netflix library. Yeah. So in episode one, Joe McHale goes into the Upside Down. And uh, he meets with the guy who plays Luke Cage. And a couple of episodes ago, um, they showed the opening scene to this week's movie, Tag. Yes. Yes. And God damn, that's an amazing fucking opening scene. It's such an amazing scene that I showed it to both Natasha and Bella. And I, 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 I could not help. I, 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 I cracked up laughing when the whole top of the bus came off. Oh hell yeah! Oh hell yeah! So I was rather pleased to see that that was that was our movie. Yeah, and it was done so well, you know. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> well, no, no, the no, no, it came as a surprise. Oh yes, it came uh, as a surprise. But before the having happens. The 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 film is done just so well and so straight and so normal, you know. Yeah. It's just a bunch of nice young Japanese schoolgirls on a bus, and they're heading somewhere. They're heading to a hotel. They're heading somewhere. They're heading to some event, and and, uh, and they're fun. they're frolicking as as yeah. Japanese schoolgirls do. Yeah. And they're, ha- they're laughing, they're having a good time, and then one of them is kind of getting picked on by the other girls. She, she uh, is writing poetry in a book. She drops her pencil, or they knock it out of her hand, not sure. She bends down and picks it up, and then suddenly a wind shows up and, and cuts both, half, car, both buses in half, killing all of the girls except for the girl that bent down to pick up her pen. And it's just... it's yeah. it, just comes right at you and it's it oh, I, I just love the scene so much it's such an amazing <laughs> opening scene the minute i saw that opening scene on the joe McHale show with joe McHale, only on netflix i Ta-da! knew i had to track him down for the podcast and boom it, of course it's also on netflix because joe McHale is apparently keeping it in the family yeah i really liked this movie it it was a it was a fun insane Japanese movie. Yeah. And this young Japanese schoolgirl keeps going into these different situations. She's on a bus with these girls. The the entire two buses get halved by a mysterious wind that cuts everyone in half. Yeah. And uh she's running and then and then a, a group of kids on a bike get halved and the girls running and she uh-huh. ends up in, in a stream, and she sees some some more dead people. No. Yeah. And so she she puts on a, a different girl's clothes and is just walking through the woods. And next thing you know, she's at a school where she where everyone knows her, and she starts thinking that it's a dream. Anyway, she keeps getting into these different violent situations. There's the school, and and a shooting takes place, and then after that, well, the was, teachers, the teachers went mad and started shooting all the kids. Yeah. This is America's future. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, this is ex- yeah, that that's exactly what it is. Eleanor's just giving us background music singing in the background of this episode. I really appreciate that, Eleanor. If that's what you want to call it. Noise. Noise. No, she's Are saying you? noise. It's literally background oh, noise. Oh, yeah, she's she's making background noise by literally just saying noise, noise over and over again. Guess what she's noise. 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 No. Yeah. So then so then after the school noise. shooting is the wedding where she's forced to marry a weird pig man. Yeah. And she has to kill her way through that. And as she's running, she ends up 
as a completely different person again, this time in a race. Yeah. Meow. Yes. Oh, meow. You're saying meow because that's 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 a cat or a cheetah or whatever. Gotcha, Eleanor. Okay, Eleanor. Gotcha. So, so I really liked the film, and I was I was really digging it, and, and I especially liked the fact that so much of it was based on alternate realities and alternate universes and stuff like that. It's obvious that they were listening to our podcast. Oh yes, most definitely. Yeah. The kids had therapy today, and when we were waiting in the waiting room, they were playing Wally, and it's just, oh, well, it's obvious you're only playing Wally because you heard that's what we're doing on the podcast. Yeah. Because everybody has the Pope on film fever. They do. It's gripping America. It's actually causing just uncontrollable diarrhea, and in certain cases, death. Mild abrasions. Yeah. Mild abrasions. That would be a good name for like a like an adult contemporary metal band. <laughs> like if Michael Bolton decided to to take another chance at being a hard rock singer again. <laughs> did he so, did he try? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Very early Michael Bolton is is like uh, he's in like leather pants and singing hard rock songs, but he went nowhere with it, so he went soft. <laughs> like the band Extreme was a rock band, but then suddenly like that wasn't going anywhere, so they sang more than words, and next thing you know, they're all acoustic. Yeah. Eleanor, Eleanor, stop! You can't get the Nintendo Switch again. No. That's not for you. I know you want to click it and do that cool thing, but Undertale's not on the Switch yet, sweetheart. You can't get the Switch. I'll get a Switch if you keep getting the Switch. Do you see what I'm saying there? Oh, I have to make her get the Switch? Okay. I don't know uh I don't know punishments. The rules are getting kind of weird. Yeah. All I know is I can't I I can't feed Eleanor I can't get her wet and I and, and direct sunlight will kill her. That's all I know. Those are the rules I stick by. Yes. What about the feeding? But then sometimes, midnight? but then, but then sometimes I'm bent to the rules and I hit the ground running. It'll make <laughs> sense not to live for fun. The lyrics are fed to the rules. Fed to the rules? You're making this up. Is that in the Jesus version? Or the real version? Okay. Fed to the Jesus. Um, I love this movie. That being said, though, I'm, I'm going to say this again. The explanation, the reveal, I thought that that felt flat, at least to me. The film is fun until suddenly they're in the future, and there's clones or robots, and they're a video game, and, like, it's... The film is fun until you try to explain why everything's happening. Like, I'm okay with this being vague. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's just that much fun. Well, like, the end didn't put me off. Because it's a Japanese movie, and that if it goes to a weird place, I'm kind of expecting that. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I I just I just thought the ending was a bit convoluted and creepy, and I didn't buy it. But I loved everything else. I absolutely loved everything else. One one positive that I that I really want to say about this film is just its originality. And I'm not saying that it's a very original film. It is a very original film. But what I'm saying is, it's literally an original story. It's not based on some legendary manga. It's not based on some wildly popular video game. And it's not based on some best-selling novel of the same name by some author whose name I won't remember. You know, this yeah. is an original idea. Uh, in that regard, yeah. Other than that, there, there were a lot of similarities to other movies where it felt kind yeah. of like a, like a mashup of its own. Yeah. But I, I, I respect any I respect original ideas. Yeah. I especially I especially respect that living in the United States where literally everything is based on something else. Yes. You know? Everything here is just based on something else. 
So. Four dollars for this. Three dollars and five cents. That's with tax. So let's do some stats. Okay. A tag is a 2015 film by a legendary Japanese director named Sion Sono, uh, a, a Japanese director who, surprisingly enough, I am aware of. How many Godzilla do movies did he direct, Steve? No, 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 not at all. He did a movie uh, in 2001 that I was obsessed with for a few months. And it's such a weird, fucked up movie that, Bunny, there's a good chance you may have seen one of Sion Sono's films before. He did a number of films, but one specific one was a Japanese indie horror film in 2001 called Suicide Club. Oh, God, Suicide Club. I love Suicide Club. Yeah, the opening has that scene where, like, uh, 50 Japanese schoolgirls jump in front of a speeding train. Yeah. 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 Then they all jump off the, the roof of the uh, the roof of the roof uh, school. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and the whole thing is, like, this cult or something. Yeah. Yeah, no. I love that film. He did that in 2001. That was probably my first modern-day graphic Japanese horror film that I ever watched. And that's one that was like actually a good movie. Yeah. You know, because there are a lot of other Japanese movies that I like, but I would not call them good movies. You know? Yeah. yeah. Machine Girl is not really a good movie. It's fun as shit. Then there's that one that one short film, uh, what Tetsuo the Iron Man or something like that. Oh God! Yeah. Close the windows before you left the house. I'm trying to think of other like films that I have seen, they, it, at least back during this period in time. It, yeah, it, it, in retrospect, though, a Suicide Club is a bit of a mess, and there's a lot of plot holes, and I looked it up on Rotten Tomatoes, and it's at 50%. But there was a period in time when I was obsessed with this film. Yeah. Love this film. Um, so that brings me to a list. Sion Sono, the director of TAG, he, he, he was called either by Variety or by... Or by... Rolling Stone, I forget which one, but they called him the most subversive director in modern Japanese cinema. Okay. And one of the most yeah. subversive directors in contemporary Japanese cinema. And he, when that when that comes in in some kind of a rating or a critique or something, I, I, I I'm always Wondering what exactly they mean by subversive, you know? Yeah, yeah. And is it really? I don't think so. Yeah. But he's done a number of movies. He's got a big, long list of credits. And so I was going through the credits. Um, and, and so I came up with a list. All right. And I'm really proud of this list. The list is entitled... Titles of films directed by Sion Sono that could also be shitty Aerosmith songs. Okay. You, you mean Aerosmith songs? Yeah, yeah. I have a really hard problem with... I, I have a really difficult problem with Aerosmith. Really? I, I used to... I, I, if there's ever a band that sold out in the history of bands, it's fucking Aerosmith. Oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. know, when when Aerosmith was Aerosmith, I liked Aerosmith. Yeah, it, it, you can if you if you really look at their body of work, you can tell the point where they started to get clean. Oh, you totally can. Yeah, because that's the point where things got so sanitized. Mm -hmm. I was listening to the radio and "Dude Looks Like a Lady" came on, and there was something in that song that's like. I'm not sure if this is a song we should be listening to now. <laughs> you know, one of those Probably songs not. that's not PC in retrospect, like the whole song is, 
oh my god, this man looks like a woman. So funny what I said. Yeah. What did you say, honey? So funny what I said about it. I know. What did you say about it? Oh, how he was basically singing about himself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, uh, uh, Steven Tyler finally looked in a mirror. Yeah. <laughs> and wrote a song about it. So I got a hard time. I, I have a really hard time with Aerosmith and, and so much of their music sucks. Uh, yes, it does. I also I also don't like all of the like. This song's about sex. Shh, don't tell anybody, though. Wink, wink. Yeah. And, and that upsets me like love in an elevator. This song is about fucking a woman in an elevator and it plays all the time. Mm hmm. Like, like, well, you'll be at McDonald's and the song will come on the radio and that will be fine because this is a song about fucking that we're all OK with. <laughs> yeah. Aerosmith is a bit subtle. Like, I remember their their single Pink. Okay, Pink is the color of love and oh, Jesus fucking Christ. We know what you're saying, Aerosmith. Yeah, we were okay with that. People were okay with that. Society was okay with that because it wasn't explicit lyrics and it would take kids until their teens to realize it. So it was acceptable to play in the McDonald's. Pink is the color of your pussy. So this list is titles of films directed by Scion Sono that could also be Shitty Aerosmith songs. Aerosmith songs. I had a hard time with that. Here we go. Number one, be sure to share. Okay. You know, because Aerosmith, Aerosmith always has that sex thing going in their songs. Yeah. So be sure to share. That's definitely an Aerosmith song. Strange Circus. If that's not an Aerosmith song, then it's an Aerosmith album. <laughs> Oh I yeah, Strange album. Circus. Yeah, Strange Circus. Yeah, eighty nine. I saw them on tour. That was that was awesome. Yes. Uh, Into a Dream. That reeks of Aerosmith. Yeah. That's that's them trying to recapture their former glory. Yeah, yeah. You dream know. On. A dream, continue to dream. Exactly, like exactly. It, it would later become known as Dream On 2. Yeah. yeah kind of like how Chubby Checker wrote like five twist songs. Yeah. Come on, baby, let's do the twist. Let's twist again like we did last summer. Hey, let's twist for a third time. For the love <laughs> of God, why isn't anyone twisting anymore? <laughs> Can you all please keep twisting? Very. He did a lot of twist songs. Yes. Yes, he did. He had bills to pay. He. He. he yeah. He, he had bills to pay, and ain't nothing in this world for free. That's right. He had mouths to feed. Uh huh. Hazard. That could Hazard. be an Aerosmith song. But it would be like about. It, it would be like about a, a man driving these curvy roads, but the roads are the curves of a woman. Yeah. 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 You, you gotta, you gotta be hazardous when you're, when you're trying to drive this woman home. <laughs> wink, wink, sex. You could have done that better. Yeah, I could have done it better, but, but yeah. Or this woman is hazard. Yeah, the like, woman is a hazard. No, you're like, it's, it's a song. Okay. I don't know the lyrics, but it's a song. It's definitely a song about a man in a car and he's got a woman in the seat next to him and it's a bench seat of course yeah and it's a hazard to drive her home in the middle of the night traveling those curves long mm. and hard yeah and gotcha okay yeah there you go that's aerosmith thank you honey you're welcome for the assist love exposure love exposure Exposure. Okay. If you really close your eyes and concentrate, you can hear that entire song and see the video. <laughs> uh, guilty of romance. That could be one of their uh, ballads, like if they made Armageddon two. Yeah. Uh huh. 
Yeah, exactly. Then that would be that would be the theme. Guilty of romance parentheses theme to Armageddon two. Yeah, I could see that. I could totally see yeah. that. Yeah. Land of Hope. That would be because you got to think like 1987 Aerosmith. That would be their song like during the Reagan era about how great America is. Uh huh. You know? Like a Rocky Four song is what I'm thinking. I, uh, uh, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Love and Peace. That's another one. That's another Aerosmith song. Whispering Star. Whispering Star. There we go. Yeah, I can already hear the annoying um, harmonica solo in Whispering Star. That's That sounds like the song that a current Aerosmith fan would pull out to prove to you that they're still geniuses. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh have you? Whispering yeah, Star. Whispering Star? Oh, yeah. you've got to hear Whispering Star. This one might be a little bit of a of a stretch, but I, I still I still stand by this next one. Why don't you play in hell? That would be early Aerosmith. I, I was thinking like eat the rich. <laughs> That's what I was thinking, but it could also be it could also be like back in the saddle Aerosmith. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, this week's movie, Tag. And, and in my mind, the Aerosmith song Tag is about playing tag with a woman. We're playing a game. Let me lay my hands on you. Nothing will be the same. I just wrote a verse. Mm-hmm. See, I was thinking it would be more childish. More childish? More to make you think, oh, let's... Let's play tag, running through the field, innocence lost type stuff. Then we can play doctor. No, no, not no. like, okay, now you're just... I'm immediately, I immediately go to sex because it's Aerosmith. It's, well, it's, yeah. yeah, it's Aerosmith. I'm also going to sex, but I'm doing it way more subtle. Because, yeah. like, running through the fields, lay my hands on you type thing, innocence lost when, during this game of tag... You know, I don't. I'm not a fucking songwriter, but it's yeah. there, and you see it. You see it in your head. <laughs> you know. That really gets me thinking. Uh, whatever happened to Liv Tyler? I'm pretty sure she died of a heroin overdose. Yeah, possibly. I haven't I seen her since but Jersey Girl. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah. That uh, I think I heard that she likes to eat soft dog food. She likes to eat soft dog food. Yeah, some about her teeth. She's got really sensitive teeth. And well, well, like it's packed with nutrients and just something about the taste really. Well, of course work. she likes it. It's delicious. We've all tried it, but I I'm just not. I'm just surprised that maybe the Lord of the Rings took too much out of her and she's like, I'm tapping out. <laughs> I guess she's she's been in Oh God, you know what it is. You know what it is. Oh, of course, Bunny. What? I planned all of this. This isn't yet another uh, coincidence. No, I planned all of this. Okay. I was reading a list of Scion Sono songs that could be shitty Aerosmith songs. Aerosmith did the theme to Armageddon. Talking about Armageddon would lead me to wonder what happened to Liv Tyler. And she's been in a few indie films, but her real last major film was next week's movie. Uh oh. Her last major film was The Strangers. The Red Headed Stepchild of the Marvel Cinematic Universe 2008's The Incredible Hulk. Oh. She's been in a few little things, like uh, she was in that movie Super with Dwight Schrute. She was in Robot and Frank, which I vaguely remember kind of wanting to see. Uh, she's been in a few little things. Apparently, she was in that TV show, The Leftovers, which I never bothered to see because I yeah. read the book and I'm still pissed about it. Um, 
but yeah, her last major film was The Incredible Hulk, which it's amazing that 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 you know we're getting close to Avengers: Infinity War and Untitled Avengers Four, which will be coming in two thousand summer of two thousand nineteen. Yeah, and that is going to be just putting a bow around the current Marvel Cinematic Universe and giving birth to a new Marvel Cinematic Universe. And so now all of these characters are coming back from all of these different Marvel films, except for the one they don't want you to remember. Yes. <laughs> And it blows my mind that in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, there is one film that they just want to bury. Yeah. Oh, please let it die. I was so shocked when they said that a that that a General Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross was going to be in Civil War. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is the first time since 2008 that they've acknowledged that they made a Hulk movie. <laughs> yes. Like, oh my god, they're saying it exists. This is huge news. <laughs> that is next week's movie because uh Natasha and I were talking, it might have been during the road trip. Uh no, um it was actually here. It was here it was at home. Walmart. I went to the bathroom and you and Eleanor were going through that going rack through they have of the, the superhero all the Marvel movies. movies. And yeah. Eleanor was saying, you know, Super Spider Man, Iron Man. Yeah. Usually it was just man. Um and I was like, The Incredible Hulk, have I seen that? And then you were like, yeah, you're, uh, I mean, I don't know. If you remember that one with whatever the fuck his name is? And I was like, oh, yeah, I don't want to see that. <laughs> the only good thing about it is that it is that guy's in it from Lie to Me. Mm. Uh, Pumpkin, Ringo. Pulp Fiction. I forgot his name. Help me see, out, buddy. I, I don't know. For me being older, I I I, I kind of like to see Nick Nolte from time to time, just to just to know he's <laughs> still alive. Yeah. You know, Nick Nolte. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, it, and it's and it's also comforting to see somebody who had so much promise as a young man. To really get yeah. out there and become a, a, a solid actor and just fuck your life away. You know, just. Yeah. Yeah. Tim Roth. That's Tim Roth. Tim Roth is the bad guy in The Incredible Hulk. I figured it out. Yes. No, 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 no. Was that the first one or the second one? He was no, he you're was thinking of Hulk. That was the Ang Lee one that had the like comic book uh frames during it and and Okay, you're talking about the Ed Norton one? Yeah, the Ed Norton one. Right, because okay. That the, had the, yeah. Yeah, no, the movie Hulk what that was before the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. So this was their official Marvel Cinematic Universe version of the incredible hulk and and i i'm still blown away at the fact that they made a movie which starred edward norton as the incredible hulk but they hated him so much that they immediately recast him i remember at the yeah. time they're like wait who who the hell is this guy that they're getting to play the hulk i've never seen him before i have no idea who he is edward norton was just the hulk yeah how can they oh, yeah. recast the Hulk. I'll never remember this guy's name. Who's playing the new Hulk? No one will ever know his name. So I think there's a lot to talk about yeah. there, and also I I I, I kind of want to show the family it because this I, again I, I Maxwell hasn't seen the Hulk movie. Yeah, you know. He loves all these Marvel superhero movies. I don't think he's seen this. N N Natasha definitely hasn't seen this. I think it's all right, but can you imagine how uh, much of a pain in the ass Edward Norton is that they immediately like distance themselves from this film? Yeah, that's cool. That's cool because that's exactly what should happen to Dick Wads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, if you want to know why Edward Norton is a dick, just watch Edward Norton in Birdland. <laughs> Because that's all based on the life of Edward Norton. Because that, all of the parts that the people are playing in that film are loosely based on themselves. <laughs> 
So it's not a coincidence that uh, what's his name, uh, Michael Keaton, is playing a washed up actor who once played a bird aviator aviary related superhero movie yeah. franchise. You know. Yeah. And and it's no it's no uh, coincidence that. Edward Norton is a impossible to work with Dick <laughs> in that movie. I, I don't so know what happens to people. I really don't. Yeah. Don't, but don't they, re- week. don't they realize just how disposable actors are? Yeah. Yeah. I do not know. Also, I bet, uh, I bet Deanna has a decent amount of stuff to say about, about this for next week too. Okay. Uh, Deanna, did you see The Incredible Hulk, the Marvel movie with Edward Norton as Bruce Banner? Probably, but I never liked the Hulk movies. Okay. Well, they've, they've all been pretty crap. Is that the but... one with the dogs? No, no, that's Hulk. We're talking about The Incredible Hulk. It was the movie that Marvel made immediately after Iron Man. And, it, it, and Edward Norton played Bruce Banner, and they hated him so much that after the film, they immediately recast him as What's-His-Nuts, who plays Hulk now. Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. I remember his name because you said, are they the dogs? And then Ruff, that's how I remembered his name, Mark Barkalo. <laughs> um... Is that the one where the other guy also injects himself with some shit and he yeah. becomes purple or Tim orange Roth. or something? Tim Roth from I didn't like that one even Stern more than I didn't like the one with the dogs. Really? I hate the one with the dogs. It's like three and a half hours long and it's less about the Incredible Hulk and more about his family life. Yeah. Which is really fucked up. Like, okay, Ang Lee, I get it. You like talking about families, but we don't see... We don't go and see a Spider-Man film to see about a young to to see a film about a young boy's relationship to his elderly uncle. Yeah, you know, that's kind of important, though. It's important, but that's not the only reason. Yeah, Uncle Ben's dead. Let's leave. <laughs> Holt's family has fucking nothing to do with his story. Yeah, just nothing. You don't go see an Incredible Hulk film to learn about how the sins of the father <laughs> affect the sins of the son. Yeah. No, fucking Taiki Wakaka Waka is like, oh yeah, we're going to make a film with a Hulk in it. Yeah, you know what we're going to have him do? Meet his father. No, never mind. We're just going to have him smash. Yeah. Yeah. And ad lib a bunch of shit. That's what we're going to do. I fucking love that man. Taiki Wakako yes. Waka Waka. Love, love that him. man. Taika? Love him so much. Is oh is wait, how do you pronounce it? I don't know. Taika. Okay, I call him Taiki Waka Waka. Well I, I saw the blooper reel and the yeah. Hera Somebody character or Helena or whatever yeah. calls him Taika. Hella. The goddess of Helena. death. Hella? And then I just kind of ad libbed his last name because I don't know how to pronounce that shit. Yeah. Did she say it so all snotty? Like, What'd you say? Did she say it all snotty? Like, Taika. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Well? I'm already I'm already working on getting that sent to you in case you don't have it. I'm assuming you don't because no one has it because yeah. these movies are these movies. Uh, hey, pants. So that'll probably be there for you uh, tomorrow morning. Awesome. So, Thank you. Yeah. Oh, and, and I'll send you Scooby Natural too. Forgot okay. about that. Cool. Did you download it? No. I N C dash U L K. I gotta change the titles when I send them to you. Yeah, I've noticed that. Yeah. Because if I just if I just call it what it is, then they're like, oh, we can't have this here. Boom. So that is next week. Next week. No. Next week we will be doing the uh, redheaded stepchild of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. 2008's The Incredible Hulk. Maxwell, I'm excited to watch this with you. I want to hear your uh, thoughts about it. Okay. And uh, for homework next week, we are doing two episodes. Important to point out. Two episodes of supernatural 
We are doing Season 5, Episode 9. It's entitled Changing Channels, and it's on Netflix. And also, the latest episode of Supernatural, entitled Scooby Natural. Maxwell, you watched Scooby Natural. That was funny, huh? That was really funny. A lot of ascots. Oh, yeah? We need to get me an ascot. <laughs> Honey, where can I buy an ascot? That's an excellent question. I'll go to ascots.com. Which I'm a... Ascots are... Ascots are weak, yeah. You, you ask Earring Ken. I'm sure he will know. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll ask Magic Earring Ken, honey. He'll know where I can get an ascot and some cock rings, so that's good. Uh-huh. So that's next week, but now that I'm looking back at this episode, um, Earring Magic Ken, that was hilarious. Yes. Um, let's see. We had a great Mandela effect. Salty, that was fun. Mm-hmm. And uh, I told, uh, I finally woke America to the massive squirrel conspiracy. Yes, you have. So, so yeah. America is in your debt. Yeah. Um, the squirrels are taking over, Maxwell. You need to watch out. Uh, so, I'll just karate chop them. You'll just karate chop them? You got to watch out because they're uh, quick. They'll crawl you, you know? But I'm quicker than them. I'll just that's, that's a good point. You are you are a quick when you're a speedster. Yep, I'm a speedster. <laughs> the speedster. But now that I'm looking back at this episode, looking back at my life and all the successes and failures, I gotta say, I think this has been a, a pretty damn good episode. This has been a good episode. A damn good episode, yes. Yay. I got a damn, honey. That's how I know it was good. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve and, uh, and Jesus. I, and I am Maxwell. Can you not interrupt the outro, bro? That would be cool. Nice use of the word outro, Bella. So for Natasha and Maxwell and you don't speak for Bella... Me. Not for Natasha. <laughs> and Eleanor and Amber and Emerald and... You have to put an and after everything. D&D, Deanna, and Destiny. I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you douche waffles and poopy tits. You schnoogles. You schnoogles? You next time on the Pokemon Show, you snoogles. <laughs> snoogles. That's a new word. And now he's running away because he's the speedster. Do, 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 Skeep, skeep, scat, stoop, the, the, uh, floop. Noop, 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 noop. No, that is Noop, 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 noop. By Tiny Rogers. Cut and print. <laughs>